Okay. I think I think I'm back down on earth now. Just check wait, what's my pulse? <laughs> um even when Arsenal are flying, even when we're we're doing well, the last few years have been quite good as an Arsenal fan in general. We're 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 actually on the up for once. They're still stressing me out. They're still giving me heart attacks. This isn't right. <laughs> How many times are we going to score late goals? I, I just, oh my God. Fair play to Luton. That is a really, really impressive performance from them. They did it against Liverpool. That They're not a bad team at all. Look, I, I get it, okay? They're a team that have just shot up into the Premier League in recent times. They're not a well-known, established Premier League club. But my God, they can, they can make it tough for good teams. They just sit back. They absorb all that pressure. To think they've scored three goals today and lost. Oh, the poor guys. Um, it, it It's just truly unbelievable. It really is. Uh, I'm going to be 31 in a month and a half. I'm just not sure how much more I can take of this. If we go on to win the Premier League this season, then fantastic. At least we've done it then. Because what it is, it's, it's the wait. 2004. I've been waiting since 2004 for this for our team to bloom once again. And it's it's so close. Like I can I can taste it. It's like the Premier League, the Champions League era might be coming soon as well. Like we're so close. We're building something so special. I just I need it soon because this is this is killing me. It's mental. It's absolutely mental. But I did want to give Luton Town credit because they were very impressive. But realistically, we didn't defend well. We gave away, I would say, three goals today. Raya was at fault for two of them. Ben White at fault for one as well. Um, I think on another day we don't concede any of those. Let's be honest, but that's that's not football. You can't you can't defend corners like we did. That was actually shocking. Uh, to put it into perspective, you know we've been the best defensive side in the Premier League this season, one of the best in Europe. Before today's game, we had conceded three away goals, three. Three away goals in the whole of the season so far. It's December. We've now doubled that in one game. In 60 minutes of football, we we doubled it. That just goes to show that we do have weaknesses. Um, I don't know if it's just that, you know, maybe Saliba, Gabriel, Raya just had off days. Or if it was just because Luton Town had really practiced set plays. I think it was very clear that they knew they wouldn't, they wouldn't be able to compete on the pitch with the ball on the ground. And technically speaking wise... No chance. Obviously, Arsenal might be the most technically gifted side in the Premier League. I'd argue one of the top teams in Europe with the ball on the ground. I don't think many teams can compete. So, of course, they're not going to go into the game thinking, yeah, we'll outplay them. They can play their 4-3-3 with their inverted wing backs and all this stuff. They're obviously going to look for opportunities on the break, lumping it forward or crosses, corners. You know, it, it was always going to happen. I just thought we would have dealt with them better. Because we have dealt with them very well all season long. We can go into the stats here. Um, obviously, we, we've dominated the possession as we always would. We've had way more shots, big chances. Obviously, we've got a lot more of those. Eight corners to three. This was always going to be, stats-wise, in Arsenal's favour. But the thing is, when you go to a go to a team like Luton Town, you go to a stadium like Kenilworth Road, it's so tight. The crowd are right on you. There's no doubt in my mind that the players, the Arsenal players, would have gone to this ground today knowing this is one of the toughest fixtures of the season mentally because it is such, it's so different. I can only imagine that, you know, these players are so used to playing in these massive grand stadiums. And, you know, I'm not talking bad for Luton Stadium, but come on, it's not exactly Premier League standards, really, is it? And it does feel very different for these very fortunate football players that are, are gifted every week by playing in great stadiums like, you know, the Emirates and I was going to say Old Trafford. I think that's um, falling apart slightly, but, you know, going to Wembley every now and again and Tottenham Stadium is quite incredible. And in Europe, traveling around to these just iconic stadiums and then to go down to little old Kenilworth Road where you literally have to go through someone's garden to get in a stand. It's a very different feeling. Um, and I mean, honestly, I was I was really, really unimpressed in the first half with how we dealt with that. But thankfully, quality shone through in the end. Jesus got man of the match here, but for me, it was all about Kai Havertz. I thought Kai Havertz may have just played his best game. He's really blossoming now. I'm not sure what Arteta's feeding him. He seems to be faster, stronger. 
Is he on peds? Hmm. <laughs> Someone drug test him. I think he might be having some performance enhancement drugs. I, yeah, something's going on there. He's just, he's he's a confidence player. And guess what he's got right now? Confidence. I was really happy to see Kivior start. I'm, I'm actually really sad he came off after 64 minutes. I think Arteta just felt like we weren't doing enough tactically going forward. And I think obviously Zinchenko does offer more than Kivior. But honestly, I just feel bad for Kivior. Um, although I I did discover his girlfriend today. Um, Google it. Kivior's girlfriend. She is the world champion of twerking. I'm not even joking. Anyway, um, I thought he looked okay. I, I really would like to see him get some more minutes. Gabriel and Saliba were below average today. And that's okay because they are so good for us every week. They're allowed an off game. But the real problem I had today was Raya. And I know that everything at the moment for the last two months it feels like every question about Arsenal goalkeeper goalkeeper is it Ramsdale is it Raya Raya's number one deal with it he is number one whether you like it or not Arteta has clearly made Raya his number one the issue we have now is with two fantastic goalkeepers that you could argue are equally as good if one makes a mistake do you hook them that's it now Raya you made an awful error twice today Ramsdale you're in you can't operate a club like that. I, I can't imagine being a top-level goalkeeper knowing that if you make one mistake, you're out of the team. Football can't work like that. Look at uh, Alisson at Liverpool, for example. He has had awful, high-profile mistakes. But guess what? He plays the next week. He plays the next week. He plays the next week. You build consistency. Goalkeepers will make errors, just like Ben White did with their third goal, completely ignoring Barkley behind him. Just because he's a goalkeeper, it means the mistakes are often worse. If you make a mistake in goal, it's going to be a goal. Whereas you can make a mistake at right back, at striker, at right wing and get away with it. Is what I'm trying to say, okay? Raya should start the next game. Even though he's made two errors today, it's just football. And luckily it hasn't cost us. But of course, I understand people saying that now Ramsdale should be given a chance. But I just don't think it can work like that. Two subs, by the way. Disappointing. But I, I can understand it if we're in the zone. You don't want to disrupt it. But I would have loved to have seen Reese Nelson get a couple of minutes at the end. Maybe Jorginho could have come on and done a job. But Nketiah will be looking at that and thinking, hmm, I've got a feeling Nketiah might be sold in the summer. I, I do believe that we, we know we need another striker. And I think Nketiah will provide a good chunk of funds towards that. Um, yeah, we've got a lot of injuries at the moment, of course, but we're, we're coping pretty well. I'm sad for Luton. I think they deserved something out of that. So um, unlucky. What can I say? We're five points clear. Liverpool play tomorrow. I can't remember who they play. Let's go through some of your comments. Rice is incredible. Four goals. That's insane. You called it. Oh, see, look, I, I feel so stupid. I hope people realise this, okay? But when you pay for the premium Twitter thing, yes, I pay for it. Problem. Um, you can edit your tweets within an hour. So here... <laughs> 96th minute Rice winner, calling it. The reality is, guys, um, <clears throat> 96th minute Havertz winner, calling it. And I just edited the tweet. I know most people will see that, but yeah. Some people might not and just think that I'm an actual genius. Uh, Thomas says, my nan's heart monitor just went out the window. Bless your nan. I hope she's okay. Um, never make it easy, Rice, you beautiful man. Never uh, played flat for the first 60 minutes. Yeah, Declan Rice, how have I not even mentioned him yet? Honestly, he, for me, even though he was, what, 100, 100 million plus five add-ons? It's the best 100 million spent, I think, ever in football. <laughs> to think Jack Grealish went for 100 million. Jack Grealish. Oh, Declan Rice. He is already comfortably our best player, dare I say it? I mean... Uh, that is tricky when you've got Saka, Erdegaard. Like, I, yeah, okay. But in terms of the core, integral part of the core, without Rice, we would be struggling this season. And he's literally won us the game again today. He is the signing of the summer, in my opinion. Um, so many of your comments. Obviously, I can't read through every single one. There's probably almost 100 now. But um, please do make sure if you ever want to get involved with Operation Arsenal, I tweet after the game. 90% of the time. Sometimes I record it a bit earlier before the end of the game and, and then I don't obviously get your tweets in. But 
yeah, I'd really appreciate it if you get involved, use the hashtag and all that beautiful stuff. And also follow me on Twitter. Sorry, on X. Follow me on X. Um, yeah, we're approaching 150k at some point. So Premier League table, if I can click it, please. We are looking good. Very, very good. Aston Villa up next. That's a really big game there. Sitting very pretty in fourth, but they are playing Man City tomorrow, I believe. Um, so I think they might they might lose that one and that's going to knock their confidence a little bit coming into the game against Arsenal. Are we at home? I think it's at the Emirates. No, it's not. Ooh. It's going to be a really tricky game that. I think um, Everton, I think Aston Villa have been probably... Not surprise of the season. I think everyone knows that they've they've recruited well and they're a good side and Emery's got them playing really well. But I don't think anyone was, was expecting to see them up in fourth after 14 games. Um, yeah, that's going to be an interesting game. But I think if we win that, I mean, we're, we're, we're looking pretty good, guys. We can jump into the fixture list here. Aston Villa, then a free hit against PSV. We've already qualified. We can literally play the women's team if we want. <laughs> and then Brighton. I mean, Brighton haven't been their best this season. They're still good, um, but obviously they've lost a few players. Should be beating them at the Emirates, although they smashed us last season. Liverpool away, of course, not easy. And we have to play them in the FA Cup not long after as well, early in January. Yep, there it is. Don't know if you could see that. Um, West Ham, winnable. Fulham, winnable. I mean, honestly, we could be going into the new year, top of the table, a couple of points clear. Hopefully a few of our players back um, and maybe reinforcements coming in in January. Very exciting times being an Arsenal fan, but um, it's still early in the season. There is still more than half of the games to go, but um, it feels like we're more resilient this season. It doesn't feel like we're fluking it. It's not much of a surprise anymore. Last season, I remember thinking, this is going to end at some point, right? Now, surely, now. And it just kept going and going, and we were getting somewhat lucky results, like today, in a way. But there is something different. It does feel different this season. It's like with, with the experience of what happened last year with us losing it at the very end, there's a different edge to this team. And with the recruitment that we've had, I mean, we haven't even had Timber back yet. Like getting him back in the lineup, we, we've got such a good chance. I just, I, I'm finding it hard to just, I guess, tip over the edge a little bit, get off the fence a little bit. Like, yeah, we're going to win the title because... There's a team here called Man City who we know can easily put together 15 wins on the bounce. Let's see what happens. But thank you for watching, guys, and I will see you next time.